Well, welcome, guys. This is Friday Night Live with Robert Henderson. So glad that you have chosen to join us and be a part of this weekly uh, broadcast. Uh, we are going to be continuing to talk today on developing prophetic senses. I'm really excited about this because uh, what we talked about last week is how important it is to us to know how to agree with God. In other words, I need to know how to agree with God and what He is doing so that whenever I agree with, with what I'm perceiving in the unseen realm, there can be a release of that for that to happen in the natural world. That's the way the supernatural operates. That's why Jesus said, we'll see this again in just a moment, that he only did what he saw the Father do. Because when he did it, then it was made manifest in the earth. See, they were asking him about the healing of the man at the pool of Bethesda. And they were wanting to know how he did it. And he very clearly explained, I only do what I see the Father do. See, the reason that Jesus only healed one man out of all the thousands that were probably around that pool waiting on the stirring of the water because that's all he saw the father do. And he knew that I have to, if I'll do what I see the father doing in the unseen realm, it'll manifest itself in the natural realm. And so Jesus was giving us a very, very strong picture and understanding here of how we are to operate. So let me just explain this to you or say this to you. That's why it's so so important that we know how to uh, step into the spiritual world and, if you will, to live in two worlds at one time. That we're very much physical, natural people with a physical body living in a physical, natural world. But we're also spirit beings that live in the unseen realm. And God wants to make not only, um, well, He wants us, to, our spiritual senses, to be as powerful and as strong as our natural senses is. So let me read this scripture. Hebrews 5, 14. But solid food, he says, belongs to those who are of full age. That is those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Now, I love that scripture because when he's talking about the, the exercising of senses, he's not talking about our natural senses. Now, we know we have five natural senses. See, hear, feel or touch, smell and taste. We know that, but we have have a correlation in the unseen realm of those same senses. That just like I can see in the natural, God wants to teach me to see in the spirit. Just like I can hear in the natural, God wants me to, to hear in the unseen realm. Just like I can feel or touch in the natural, God wants me to feel and touch in the unseen realm. Just like I can smell in the natural, I can smell or discern in the spirit. And just like I can taste Taste in the natural. God wants me to be able to, to, to taste and see that the Lord is good in the spirit realm. Okay, so we're going to talk about all of those. Uh, we're going to break those things down because I believe God wants to make us to be spiritual people. That we don't just live by our five natural senses. We live also by our spiritual senses and what we can pick up in the unseen realm. So this is what I like to say. We can't only live by what we see. We must also live by what we sense. So watch. Today we're going to be focusing in on, on seeing, having a seeing eye. And again, let me just use this scripture. I could use any number of scriptures, but let me just use this scripture. John 5, 19 through 20. It says, then Jesus answered and said to them, most assuredly, I say to you, the son can do nothing of himself, but what he sees the father do for whatever he does, whatever the son sees him, him doing in the unseen realm, the son also does in like manner. For the Father loves the Son and shows him all things that he himself does, and he will show him greater works than these that you may marvel. So Jesus clearly said, look, I have natural highs that lets me see in the natural, but I also have a spiritual sight that lets me see into the unseen realm, that lets me pick up and see what's happening in the unseen realm. So I want you to notice something. 
Notice that the greater works are connected to seeing. Notice what Jesus says. He said, the father loves the son and shows him all things that he himself does. And he will show him, watch this, greater works than these that you may marvel. See, we've talked about the greater works for years. In John 14, verse 12, most surely I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I will do, he will, I, uh, he will do also. And watch this, and greater works than these he will do because I go to my Father. So notice what Jesus is saying. He's saying the key to the greater works is seeing. The key to the greater works is seeing. In other words, the greater works don't originate from me. The greater works are a result of me by the power of the Holy Spirit seeing what the Father is doing and whatever I see Him do, that's what I do in like manner. That's the key to the greater works. See, if we want to see the greater level of signs, wonders, miracles, if we want to see the unthinkable, the unimaginable happen, please hear this. It's really very simple. Whatever we see the Father do, that's what we do. I can't make it happen, but watch. If I see in the spirit realm my Father doing that, that I move in agreement with that, and miracles, signs, wonders, and the super supernatural occurs on every level. So that is the critical piece to even the greater works. Whatever we see the Father doing, we do in like manner and we see the greater works occur. I just feel led. Father, I just pray, bring us into the greater works. Lord, give us a seeing eye in the unseen realm that we might discern and perceive with clarity what you're doing so that we can come into an agreement with what you are doing so that it can manifest in the natural. And we thank you for doing this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, Receive that today and began to walk in it. So what are we talking about when we're talking about seeing? What is seeing as far as from a spiritual perspective? What, what are we talking about when we're talking about that sense? Well, number one, we are talking about the ability to perceive spiritual realities. That's what we mean when we talk about seeing, that we are able to perceive spiritual reality. 2 Corinthians 4.18 says, While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Notice what Paul is saying here. Now he was talking about walking through hardships and places of affliction and all that. And he said, the way you get through that is because you're able to see the unseen. In other words, he said, we're not looking at the things which are seen. We're not just looking at the difficult places we've gone through and evaluating things just by what's happening to us or around us in the natural. He said, no, the way we maneuver our way through the difficult places, watch this, is by realizing that there is an unseen world that is even more real than this seen world. And watch, this seen world is a result of the activity in the unseen realm. So the Apostle Paul is saying, if you want to get through the trouble or you want to stop the trouble and change it, you're going to have to see the activity that is happening in the seen realm and out, of, out from underneath the leadership of the Spirit, be able to deal with that so that there is peace that can come into the natural world. But watch, you can't do that if you can't see into the unseen realm. So we have to be able to perceive spiritual realities. And that's what we're talking about when we're talking about seeing. That we are able to, to see the demonic activity. We're able to see the angelic activity. We're able to see the intent of God. We're able to see into that spiritual dimension and discern what God is doing in that realm in real time and come into an agreement with it. That's what releases his supernatural hand into this natural world. I hope you're hearing that because this is the way the supernatural works. Now, 
Now, there, again, there's all sorts of different ways. For like for a long, long time, I would actually make this statement. I don't see because I didn't want anybody expecting something of me that I couldn't produce. And one day the Lord whispered to me and he said, stop saying that. He said, you need to stop saying that. And so guess what happened? Instead of just being one who hears and just being one who feels and just being one that perceived other ways, watch, I began to see and I began to pay attention to what at one time I thought was just my imagination. And I began to realize that what I was seeing in it, maybe my mind's eye or in my spirit, if you will, what I was seeing was actually that which was going on in the spirit world. And I was amazed that when I began to ag- come in, uh, move in agreement with what I was seeing in the unseen realm, all of a sudden it began to have an effect in the natural realm. So God wants to make us seers. And so I believe God has called all of us to be seers. Now, that may not ever be the primary way you perceive what's going on in the spirit world, because I believe that can be different from person to person. But I will tell you that the more that the more we avail ourselves, we can begin to see with great clarity. And we're going to talk about it here in just a little bit, why that happens. And it doesn't have to be from a gift. That literally you don't have to have the gift of a seer that you can learn to see. Because please please hear me, I did not and I do not necessarily have the gift of a seer, but I have learned to see into the spirit realm. How? Because of Hebrews 5.14. I have exercised my senses through, through the use of the senses, through seeking to do something with them. I have, through, through the use of the senses, I have exercised their, the senses to discern both good and evil. And that, de- that area of seeing has begun to develop in my life. Okay, so it is the simply the perceiving of spiritual realities. Okay, um, let me give you a second one. What is seeing? It is understanding God's purposes. See, when you see into the unseen realm, you're actually seeing and beginning to understand God's purposes in a matter. See, you may look into the natural And you may see something going on, but that may not depict the purposes of God. You need to be able to see, if you will, behind the scenes or in the unseen realm to see what the real purpose of God is in a given matter. In Ephesians 1, 18 through 19, it says the eyes of your understanding... Isn't that interesting? The eyes of our understanding being enlightened or, if you will, being opened. In other words, there's an ability to see the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. What happens whenever my eyes are enlightened and I'm now able to see into the unseen realm? What happens? That that you may know what is the hope of his calling. In other words, when you began to see into the unseen realm, by revelation, you began to understand the hope connected to his call on your life. See, you you can't know that in the natural. But listen, as you begin to see into the unseen realm, you know the hope. And there's hope that's released into your life based on his calling, what he has actually called you to do. See, when it, listen, listen, when you can see the hope in his calling on your life, all depression breaks off because of what you're seeing through the spirit of your understanding being enlightened. So you know what is the hope of his calling. You know what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. In other words, you begin to realize how important you are to God. Listen, I can tell you all day how important you are. But watch, only when you start seeing it in the spirit realm, do you begin to really know how important you are to God. How important you are to Him. So you know what is the hope of His calling? And what is the glory of His inheritance in the saints? That God has an inheritance in us and we're very important to Him. And watch this. And what is the exceeding greatness of His power toward us who believe according to the working of His mighty power? Wow, watch. See, when you can see, guess what happens? All of a sudden, no problem is too big. No problem is too big. Why? Because you can see how big the power of God is. 
The, God's power is so big that it, that nothing is impossible. That's what Jesus said. Nothing is impossible to him that believes. All of this is happening because your understanding, the eyes of your understanding are being enlightened. And you're coming to new awarenesses of the purpose of God because of what you're seeing in the unseen realm. Let me give you a third one. What is seeing? It is, it is revealing the state of of our heart. It reveals the state of our heart. I love this. Jeremiah 1, 11 through 12. It said, God is touching Jeremiah. He is raising him up. He is commissioning him and, and setting him forth as a prophet to the nations. And it says, moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Jeremiah, watch what he said. God said, what do you see? And I said, I see a branch of an almond tree. And the Lord said to me, you have seen well, for I am ready to perform my word. Now, the word or when he saw the branch of an almond tree, why was that important? Because Israel was in a backslidden state. Well, an almond tree actually budged during winter. So here's what Jeremiah, Jeremiah as a budding prophet was actually seeing Israel as an almond tree that literally he was seeing that even though it was in a degenerative and, and rebellious and backslidden state, God was able to bring fruit out of it. And God said, watch this. God said, you've seen well. You've seen well. In other words, he was able to see Positive in the midst of negative. I want you to hear something. You'll never be someone that can see and move with God until you quit letting what you're seeing being dictated by what's going on in the natural. Listen, any of us can tell you what's going on in the natural. You got to be able to see the intent and the positive God. Watch, because God needs for us to be able to see the good in the midst of all the evil and the bad so that we can prophesy what we see so that the bad is turned to good. That's what God has to have. So watch, it reveals the state of our heart. Have we allowed ourselves to become so pessimistic and so cynical that, that we're actually seeing from that rather than seeing out of the Spirit of God. See, God commended Jeremiah, you have seen well. You're going you're gonna to make it. You're going to be one I can use because you're not letting the negativity all around you, you're not letting the wounds of your own heart, you're not letting any of this influencing you. You're able to see what I really intend to do, that out of a backslidden state, I am going to raise up a people restored holy to the Lord. And I pray that God gives us a right and a good heart that we can see the right things that God wants us to see so that we can prophesy into reality and we can see situations change because we're prophesying from the good that we're seeing, not the negativity that's all around us in the natural. I hope that makes sense. You see, remember God picked Ezekiel up and he set him down in the midst of the valley of the dry bones and he said, can these bones live? He said, Lord, you know. Why? Because he needed Listen, he needed Ezekiel to prophesy so that, that that valley of dry scattered bones, the bone could come together, the flesh and the sinew could wrap around it, the breath of God could enter it, and a mighty army could arise. See, he needed a prophet who in the midst of a terrible situation could still see the good in the intent of God. I have some dear friends that literally they had a very powerful seer gift in their ministry. The problem was this person only saw negative. They finally set them down, said, you got to deal with your heart because all you're seeing is negative. And they, be, and they made this person sit down and over the process of a few months, their heart got healed and they came back and they were able now to see the good of God and not just the negativity. I always tell people this. There's nothing more dangerous than a wounded prophet. 
because they will prophesy wrong things out of the wound of their heart rather than able to see the intent and the good of God in the midst of chaos. So what we see reveals the state of our heart. Number four, what we see can remove fear, should remove fear. Because look, you can look at the natural and you can think, man, this, this, we're in trouble. But watch, this happened to, to Elisha and his servant. Elisha keeps telling the king how to uh, get away from the Syrian army and the traps they have set. So the Syrian army sends a, a, a group of soldiers, a bunch of soldiers, to come and get Elisha because they find out he's the culprit. He's the one that's causing them the trouble. And so watch what happens. 2 Kings 6, 14 through 17. Therefore, he sent horses, the Syrian king, chariots, and a great army there. And they came by night and surrounded the city. And when the servant of the man of God arose early, his servant, and went out, there was an army surrounding the city with horses and with chariots. Watch. And his servant said to him, Alas, my master, what shall we do? He, 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 he got terrified. He got, he got caught up in fear. And it says, so he answered. The prophet answered, do not fear, for those who are with us are more, more than those who are with him. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. Then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. Notice the fear that took hold of the servant completely dissipated once he saw into the unseen realm. And he saw if you if we continue reading, he saw that there was more for them than there was against them that there was the horses and the chariots and angelic forces of God that were surrounding the enemy that was surrounding them. And the fear dissipated and left. And great victory was won. God actually blinded the army and they led them away. And they never had another problem with them when it was all said and done. Why? It all happened because fear didn't take hold because of what they could see in the unseen realm. If we will learn to see, then I promise you a lot of what petrifies us will no longer have that effect upon us. Let me give you number five. What happens when we can see? What is seeing? Well, it causes healing to come. I saw this years ago. Watch this. Matthew 13, verse 15. He says, for the, heart are, are, for the hearts of this people have grown dull. Their ears are hard of hearing. So it's talking about hearing and seeing. And their eyes they have closed. Lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears. In other words, they should perceive spiritually. Watch lest they should understand with their hearts and turn so that I should heal them. I want you to see this. It says their inability to hear and to see is literally going to prohibit them from being healed. Now, he was talking about healing a culture and healing of people, but healing is healing. I want you to hear this. Many times people's physical healing doesn't come because they can't see. It doesn't come because their eyes haven't been opened where that they by revelation understand something because revelation brings real faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. That when we, when we perceive something in the spirit realm, when we are able to perceive that and see that, I want you to hear this. All of a sudden it bursts faith and healing and the supernatural began to flow because of what we are seeing and perceiving. So, Father, I want to ask right now before we take a break, I want to ask that you would empower us to see, 
that you would give us the gifts and the tools we need to be able to see on an entirely level into that unseen realm that all of a sudden things from the, uh, from the unseen can change things in the natural from a supernatural means because we, Lord, as you are doing what we see the Father do in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord bless you. Watch these announcements. I'll be right back back. continue to talk about keys to sing. I mean, we spent the whole first part of this, to, you know, dealing with this whole issue of seeing and some of the things that unlocks and why it's so important and why should we should be faithful to exercise our senses by using them. In other words, we try to do it. Listen, it, it, it's a phenomenal thing. God just says, look, come on, you need to just step into this and start trying. We need to be like Peter, that we're willing to get out of the boat and put our feet on the water. And if we miss it or we mess up, big deal. Let's learn from it. And we'll go again the next time. But we'll pay attention to what we're perceiving and seeing in the spirit world. So let me give you four keys to seeing. Four keys to seeing. You remember I told you that 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 seeing is not necessarily about a gift. I mean, please hear me. People do have gifts of seeing. They have spiritual gifts where that they are able to perceive in the unseen realm. That was not the case with me. It was not the case, okay? And, and I know a lot of people that are that way, that that's not the case. But that doesn't mean you can't see. Why? Because seeing is not about a gift. It's about intimacy, and you need to hear this. I, I touched this last week a little bit, but John 5, 19 through 20, it says, Then Jesus answered and said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, the Son can do nothing of himself. In other words, Jesus is saying, Look, I don't have the ability to do anything. I laid that part of me down when I came into the earth. So watch, Jesus did not live in the earth and operate in the earth as God, even though he is God. But he operated as a man filled with God. That's what Philippians chapter 2 says. So when he says that the Son of Man can do nothing, he's literally saying, I am absolutely dependent on the Holy Spirit to do these things through me just like you will be. So the Son can do nothing of himself but what he sees the Father do. In other words, I have got to see the Father do it. It's going to originate with the Father, not with me. So he said, whatever I see the father doing, he said, for whatever he does, the son also does in like manner. In other words, that's how miracles happen. That's how the supernatural is released. For the father watches, loves the son. And that, that, in other words, the father and the son are in a love relationship. Therefore, the father shows him all things that he himself does, and he will show him greater works than these that you may marvel. The intimacy that Jesus had with the father and the father had with Jesus caused the father to, to, to pull the veil back and show Jesus everything he was doing. So listen to me. The reason we don't see or the reason that we don't see the supernatural on the level that we desire for the greater works that we talked about is because the father doesn't have anyone to see. Because the Father is always working. The Father's always... See, the Bible, remember the Bible says about Jesus that if the mighty works He had done, if every one of them had have been written down, the books of the world would not have been able to contain them. That's how much was going. Why? Because the Father was constantly working, constantly working. And the Bible says out of the love relationship He had with the Son, He showed Him 
all things that he himself was doing. The Holy Spirit was showing him everything. Now, that's not, that's not happening for us, because if it was, there'd be a whole lot more signs and wonders. See, the problem is God doesn't have anybody to see. Why? Not because there aren't people that are gifted, because there are very few that actually walk in intimacy with Jesus. So because the more intimate we are with him, the more we will be shown what he is doing. And we will have the opportunity to come into an agreement with that by faith so that what we're seeing in the unseen manifests itself in the natural. I hope that makes sense. So it's not about gift. It's about intimacy. It's about intimacy. And so whenever I began to see this, I thought, okay, then I can see. I need to quit saying, as God said to me, quit saying I can't see. I can see. Therefore, therefore, I'm going to believe God. I'm going to start trying to use that realm of senses. I can start using that and I can start seeing. I can start paying attention to what I'm perceiving in the spiritual world. Because I I walk, I seek to walk in intimacy with him. Okay, number two. Number two. This is, it sounds simple, but it's really quite profound. The second thing we need to do, the second key to seeing, is we need to be looking. I mean, you can't see if you're not looking. In in 1 Samuel 16, 7, I just chose this scripture. But but here's what I mean before I read that. Here's what I mean by looking. I mean, I'm I'm in a spiritual place. I'm in a place of prayer. I'm in a place of worship. Or maybe I'm just walking with God, whatever's going on. But watch, I want to see what's going on in the unseen realm. Well, I need to look. I can't see if I'm not looking. In other words, I need to engage myself. And as I'm standing in that place, I need to be looking in the spirit realm to see what might be going on in that dimension in which I'm standing in. See, 1 Samuel 16, 7, but the Lord said to Samuel, do not look, talking about uh, Eliab, the oldest, do not look at his appearance or at his physical stature because I have refused him. Because Samuel was making the same mistake we were make, we make. He was, he was thinking this is the Lord's anointed right here. This is God's anointed that is standing before me because look how wonderful he looks in the natural. He said, he said, do, but God said, don't look at his appearance or at his natural or his physical stature because I have refused him. In other words, Samuel was about to anoint somebody God had refused. For the Lord does not see as man sees. Now watch this. For a man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks or the Lord looks at the heart. See, God said, I'm looking at the heart. I'm looking into the unseen realm that you, Samuel, are supposed to function in, but you're about to mess up. You're looking in the natural. You need to open your gaze and look in the spiritual, because if you look in the spiritual, you'll see that this is not the heart of the person I've chosen to be king. I've chosen one that's in the sheepfolds that has a heart after me. For God has has sought a man whose heart is after him. And you need to look at that heart. I mean, I'm telling you, we are so carnal. What is carnal? Carnal doesn't mean sinful. Carnal means unspiritual. Carnal means that I'm, I'm living by what I'm perceiving in the natural, not what I'm perceiving in the spiritual. So here's the deal. We need to look. That means we are anticipating, we are expecting to see something in the unseen world. So look around. When you're in that, especially, I would just say this to you, when always, but especially when we're in places where we sense and know God's presence is there, pay attention. Pay attention in the unseen realm. Look. Look, be looking, be aware of what's going on there. You might be amazed at what you'll see. Now, the enemy will come along and he'll whisper, that's your imagination. But it's not. So often it's not. In fact, I have found out that most of the time it's not my imagination. It's actually the spirit of the Lord 
giving me understanding. Because here's what happens to me. It's like, it's like I'll be in leading prayer. I'll be in a worship situation. I'll be wherever. And all of a sudden, this image or these pictures or this, this, this thing comes, it flashes across my spirit, across my mind. There's no reason for it. There's no reason for me to see something like that. All of a sudden, I just see it flash across my spirit or across my mind. And it's a picture. I love what somebody said one time. He said that the language of the spirit is visions and dreams. Visions and dreams. It's the language of the spirit. It's the way the Holy Spirit communicates to us. So I am figuring out that I pay attention to those flashes that come across my spirit, that come across my mind. And I start as I, as I, as I see these flashes or these pictures that come or these images that come, I start seeing now what, how does that make my spirit feel? What, what, what is, what is this? What's something being said about that? And I'm quite amazing. It's quite amazing what comes out of that. But it's because I'm looking. It's because I'm looking. Number three. Number three. Two more real quickly. What are some keys to seeing? We should be prayed for. In other words, imparted to. In 2 Kings 6, 17, we read it earlier. So here's these, this army of Syria that's surrounding Elisha and his servant. And Elisha's servant is petrified, but Elisha is unmoved. Why? Because he's a prophet. And he's getting up in the morning, and watch, he's seeing in the unseen world. All the, all the, the servant is seeing is the, is the army of Israel surrounding the whole city. And he thinks we're in major trouble here. But Elisha seeing into the unseen realm. So what does he do? It says, and Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes, obviously not the, the, the natural eyes, the spiritual eyes. He opened the eyes of the young man and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of the horses and the chariots of fire all around Elisha. God had dispatched his army, his angelic army to his prophet to protect him and his purposes in him. Okay, but watch the, 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 uh, the result or the reason why the servant saw was because Elisha prayed. Listen, when somebody who can see prays for us, we need to be in a receptive mode. We need to be those that are receiving from the Lord. So the Bible says he prayed, Lord, open his eyes that he may see. And suddenly, as it was, the scales in the spirit realm fell off of his eyes and he began to be able to see uh, into the unseen world. And when he did, he saw that there was more for them than there was against them. And as we said earlier, fear completely left him and the situation because he could see the true nature of things in the unseen realm. But here's what we want to do. Listen, we want to pray. We want to pray for God to open our eyes. We need to pray as Elisha prayed, Lord, open his eyes that he may see. Now, this is quite amazing. Before I began to actually see I remember there was, we were commissioning some people into the apostolic realm. And I remember I laid my hands on this one guy and, and he told me later, now watch, I'm not seeing, but I'm just apostolically laying my hands on these people, commissioning them uh, into alignment and into the function that God had for them. And I laid my hands on them. Well, he went home and this is what he said. He started having open visions of the Lord, that the Lord would walk into the room and sit down, and he would have conversations with him. And the Lord would answer his questions. And I was like, and he said, it all started happening when you laid hands on me. I thought, oh my gosh. Even though I don't see, this guy was propelled into another realm of, of function. He said he had never seen anything in his life. 
And now he's having these open visions where it's not him seeing something in his mind's eye. He's actually, it's like the Lord is literally there. He's having these open visions where he is seeing the Lord and time is suspended and he's having these congregation conversations. And he said, all because you apostolically laid hands on me. See, I believe it ignited something in him from the apostolic authority, whatever that God God had given me that it ignited and it unlocked that thing to be able to work in his life. Now, since then, I've started seeing and I've always seen in dreams, which is a part of seeing. But I also want you to know that there is something very powerful about prayer and impartation. And I'm going to do that today. I want to pray that we would have unlocked in us a greater level of seeing in the spirit realm. Okay, number four, the last one. Whatever you see underneath the direction of the Lord, we should share it. Now, but I say that because not everything we see maybe should be shared in the exact moment. But, 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 but when you see something, it's because God is giving us information that is necessary and that can help us. So watch what he says. I love Jeremiah 23, 28. Here's what Jeremiah the prophet said. The prophet who has a dream which, by the way, is a part of seeing. You say, oh, well, I thought you were just talking about, you know, me being awakened at a prayer meeting. No, no. Dreams, are you see. That's what you do in dreams. You see. See, the dreams are a part of the whole prophetic realm. And so, so that's one of the primary ways that I've seen for years is I'll see literal things happen in dreams that I know is unveiling things that are going on in the spirit world or things that are about to happen in the natural world. Okay, so, so dreams are very much a part of the seeing realm. So the prophet who has a dream, let him tell a dream. He who has my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is chaff to the wheat, says the Lord. So watch what he's saying. He said, if you see something, then tell it. So my the fourth point is this. We need to share it. We need to share it. In other words, listen, if God shows us something and it's really from the Lord, then we need to follow the leadership and the impetus of the Spirit and know when and where to share such Things. Now, some things maybe God shows you and they're for the purpose of prayer only. That you're supposed to take that and pray something into reality that you've seen. But there are other things that God wants to show us that we are to tell it. That's what he said. He That, that the prophet who has a dream, let him tell a dream. What he's seeing, let him communicate it. Now, by the way, many times you have to be able to interpret what you're seeing because you're seeing something, but underneath the presence of the Lord. That's why in my prayer times, quite often, I'm seeing things in the spirit. And in those moments, I know exactly what they mean 99% of the time. Why? Because in that atmosphere, in that time, I'm discerning and knowing what's going on in what I'm seeing. So we need to be faithful to share it underneath the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Now, my prayer is that you desire to, to see. You desire to see that you want to unlock this realm and you want it to be used for the glory of God. It is something I believe that God actually has for every one of us. So I want to pray for us today. So, Father, I want to pray right now that we want to ignite and unlock and activate. That's the word I'm looking for activate this seeing gift in your people. So as a point of faith, just put your, ha- put your hands over your eyes. Father, I declare right now eyes to see. I declare, Lord, the eyes of understanding enlightened that they might see, that we might see on a greater level, that even as I prayed, for Alan, and and it was, he was unlocked into even a, an ability to function in open visions. I declare an apostolic activation, Lord, even right now of seeing that comes into your people's lives that results in visions and insights, but also dreams and understandings that come from the Spirit of the Lord. 
And I want to thank you, Lord, for doing that. I just sense, man, something happening here. Lord, we declare the ability to see out of your heart, out of your spirit, the ability to see, Lord, and to understand and to perceive that which you're speaking, that we will no longer be governed by just what's happening in the natural, but we will be led by the Spirit out of what we are seeing, Lord, from the empowerment and unction of your presence and of your Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Open the eyes, even as Elisha said concerning his servant, Lord, open their eyes that they might see. Thank you for it, Lord. Thank you for it, Lord. Right now, right now, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just receive, you can sense the presence and the unction of the Lord right now. Amen? Amen. Well, let's, we want to bring our offering. Why? Because, listen, our offering is a statement of faith before the Lord. It's a statement of worship. We're coming and we're bringing our offering and we're saying, Lord, I'm laying hold right now of this seeing gift. I want to see on the level. I want, I want to, by reason of use to grow in my ability to see. I declare the scales come off. The scales come off and the ability to see is released even in us and through us. And Lord, even let our offering be a statement of faith and a statement of worship as we bring our offering, that it speak before you and that it cry the care, carry the cry of our heart that we desire to see. We desire to be a spiritual people who can see in the unseen realm and understand the things that are happening around us, Lord. We thank you for that. And it's going to change the way we function and it's going to change the way we react and we respond because, Lord, of what we are able to to see. Bless our offering. Receive it as a, as a sweet smelling aroma release to you. Even as Noah, even as Noah, released an offering that was filled, of, filled with the aroma of God and it soothed God's heart. Let this aroma speak before you even as Noah's did. Lord, I pray and let the blessing of God flow upon it and let us be a seeing people exercising this sense in greater and greater levels even as we have been ap apostolically activated into this realm in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. We'll bless you guys today. I pray that blesses you. And my prayer is that all of us grow in the seeing level and come to new dimensions of awareness of what is happening in the unseen realm so that the supernatural is released in the natural. We love you. We bless you. Thank you for being a part of GPAC and a part of Friday Night Live. We'll see you soon. Lord bless you. <music>